Whether he's removing his face or on a criminal plane Or a historical chase, we love Nicholas Cage Star of screen and stage, gonna watch him all day While he's a screaming with rage, cause we're unlocking the cage Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Cage, the Nicolas Cage deep dive podcast um, where we watch every single one of his movies. Um, this is a uh, uh, usually we do this show live on Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific, but this one is going to be pre recorded due to travel stuff. So uh, it's the holidays. Coming... It's the holidays, yeah. So we're, we're coming at Cut you us from some the fucking past. slack. <laughs> sorry we tried we tried we're really we're doing a lot of them like we're, we're getting them done you know this is the fourth one i've done this week that that is That's that a is lie. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh some some stuff before we bring out our very special guest um so i am meg my co-host is chris um we have so far seen 15 for me and 27 for him Nicolas Cage movies out of his 104 movies so we are getting there <laughs> slowly <laughs> um, our theme song is by Will Gianetta who uh, has been a recent guest uh, and uh, yeah and also just a heads up we will spoil the movie this this week's movie is Matchstick Men uh, which does have a big twist so if you don't want to know the twist then don't listen to this episode and then go watch the movie and then listen to this episode so chris i think it's time to bring out our guest she is beck from true tales of the illuminati and the co-host of the show hello world on 2mb studios chloe zweiker hello. hi chloe hi welcome hello to the show. i'm so excited uh because i love matchstick men and i feel like no one else has seen it <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure when when we reached out to you about being in the show this was the first movie you uh asked for right mm -hmm. um usually we have people who are like face off the rock con air and i'm like ah sorry that is the, the same one <laughs> a lot of people request I, I give you a lot of credit for picking a relatively obscure one <laughs> You're like every Thank dude, you. every dude we asked to be on this podcast does the exact same thing it's like oh yeah i'll do face off cool see you later like as if that one wasn't taken immediately. You know what I mean? <laughs> Although I will yeah. say Face Off was surprisingly one of the not immediately requested. Like by the time we got our Face Off person, we had had a lot of people who I'd literally been like, what about Face Off? And they were like, nah. So, oh, interesting. Um, Dr. I, Dan yeah. Chapman did Face Off. Yeah, if you guys listen to the Face Off episode, we do a little digging as to why that might be. Um, yeah. Chloe, how is your day going? What's going on oh. with you? It's great. Uh, <laughs> I am staying home like everybody else. Um, and even though it happens every year, I'm completely surprised that the sun is going down earlier. Uh, and it makes me sleepy. And I need to start using my sun lamp again. So that's, that's about where I am mentally. Do you have one of the ones that like turns on slowly in the morning? I do. I don't have it set up right now um, because I just, I moved in in August and I don't need it until the winter. And so I haven't busted it out yet, but I have one of those. And then I have a regular sun lamp that you just like sit next to, but don't look directly at it because like the actual sun, it will hurt your corneas. <laughs> <laughs> do yeah, you I get a tan from it? Oh man, I wish. I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think you can. I, I, I can tell it's it's definitely getting later in the seasons because at this time of day, there'd be like a blinding light coming through my door into my eyes and it stopped happening now. So that's good. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, now it'll be dark when we finish this podcast, which will be sad. Yeah, one it's, of the, already, it's already dark here. This It's nighttime for me. Well, you are three hours ahead of us. So it, oh, yeah. it's true. <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> um, Chris, you might want to turn your volume up, by the way. Oh, am time. I too quiet? Oh, crap. Yeah, you're a little quiet. Um, yeah, one of the Oopsie. things that was surprising to me about when we moved to LA from Boston was that um, the sun still goes down really early in the, the like, it doesn't get cold, but like the yeah. sun, it gets dark just the same as you guys do. And yeah, I thought, I thought we might get away from that, but no. Yeah, because that, you know, 
that has to do with like how close you are to the equator not yeah yeah um well <laughs> so magic man or the equator is what i'm saying <laughs> just keep going. you guys want to talk about the nick cage movie at some point nah, or? i guess <laughs> i mean um, this right. is funny though because the last well all right with the magic of television the last yeah. Uh, one we did was with Will Janetta. This is re- recorded after the one with Will Janetta, who when we did National Treasure, which uh-huh. was uh, Ben Franklin played a big part in it, and he invented daylight savings time. True that. So we've come Whoa. full circle. Oh, <laughs> so this is completely on topic. Yeah, it is. So it's I'm really sorry. Just an extended uh, episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, Matchstick Men. Uh, I uh, oops, I forgot to say what year it was. What year was two thousand three? Matchstick Man. Thank you. Two thousand and three. Two thousand and three. Harken yes. back to the days of two thousand three, a year where I was a junior in college, and I had wow. I was traveling abroad probably when this movie came out. I was in Italy. That's why you missed it. That's why I met. I know I saw this movie. I saw this movie. <laughs> Did you see it in Italy? I think I saw it in Italy because there weren't very Ameri- many American movies that came across, and uh, I think this was one of them actually. Oh, so you're kidding? Yeah, because we would we would just any anything that was on English in English like in a cinema yeah. we would like go to see no matter what how shitty of a movie it was. So I saw this one, and then oh man, I hope you're not saying this movie is shitty. I can see that. I see seeing close. No, faces. it's oh, wonderful. And I saw Taking Lives, I think, uh, with uh, oh, okay Angelina Jolie. I don't know if in Edward Norton. I don't know if you remember that one. That's a real bad, real bad one. Anyway, yeah. Um. So, uh, Chloe, tell us about your history with this movie. I'd saw it. See, I it was one you had seen before. Yes, and so it's a it's a con it's a con movie. It's red. It's Ridley Scott, and it's a con movie. And this is the first. M- my mind was like super blown by this movie so i this was 2003 so i guess i was like 15 um and this is the first movie that i saw where like oh the con man gets conned (laughs) there's that twist and i and i was like i didn't even what (laughs) how but they're con men they're supposed to be smart um so I, that left a big impression on me. And the other part of it was so uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So this was at the point when uh, people were starting to put certain mental illnesses in the spotlight a little bit more. Like mm-hmm. uh, Prozac Nation had come out, the book had come out, and then they made a movie later with Christina Ricci. Um, OCD had was being looked at a lot more because like, a lot of people were thought that like the things that come with OCD are like quirky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so they use it as like a, a convenient character device. Um, and I was super into that sort of thing. Uh, and so like in this movie, Nick Cage, Nick Cage's character has OCD and agoraphobia and probably also Tourette's Mm -hmm. um and it's actually like especially considering the other depictions that we saw during that time it's actually a pretty good look at how uh damaging and how like stressful OCD is actually actually is as opposed to like on Friends, Monica had OCD, it but was it was just cute. like she likes to clean, you yeah. know, and that's not it. <laughs> and that was actually, yeah, definitely one of the things I wanted to make sure we covered during this is sort of how realistic is the portrayal um, of OCD, like because it's you know it's it's definitely like you know he plays a very over the top character, but I, yeah. you know, well, from my limited, Jerry, go ahead. Oh no, no, you go. I was just say from my limited googling, it does seem like most people who you know are knowledgeable about this are like no this is actually pretty good this is actually like relatively well done well then weigh that against this though because okay you know he's he say he's doing a good job portraying the mental illness this movie not to get too ahead of ourselves also just says hey stop faking it take these these menopause pills and it'll go away so (laughs) yeah there's 
<laughs> and that's the that's the frustrating part um is because right he does portray this so well but then like he really ruins the whole like go see a psychiatrist thing because how can you trust your psychiatrist now they're probably con men yeah. right it really <laughs> so, like it, really, it got yeah. half of it right <laughs> It's bizarre so, how well he turned out because, like, how would this – a person with mental illness would not have just bounced back so well after all this. He probably would be way worse. Like, I, I don't think that – Yeah. Know. Let's – um yeah, yeah let's, but before we get into the, the, the whole plot, let's just so – all right. So just a little background on the movie in general. Um, it was pretty well-reviewed when it came out. Um, it uh, made back its budget, but, like, it wasn't, like, a huge success financially. Yeah. Um and uh it was oh it's directed by ridley scott which is interesting so that's you know, you think you said that already Floyd, but like you know yeah. the guy who did alien and um like uh gladiator Blade Runner, so a lot of, a lot of did, did ridley scott do Blad- gladiator yeah. or no he did okay yeah what what a weird like what a weird mix of movies what a strange repertoire yeah <laughs> Thelma and louise too yeah. Man. So he's kind of like the Nick Cage of directors because Nick Cage is all over <laughs> all, the place too. All over yeah. the place, yeah. That's true. Um, and so, and part of the other reason that I like this movie so much is because I am a huge Sam Rockwell fan. I've never seen a movie where I was like, yeah, Sam Rockwell didn't do very good today. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what, like, everything I've seen him in, I'm just like, what is this human? He's so he has a gift. He's so beautiful. <laughs> He's really good. I loved uh, Galaxy Quest. I loved him in Galaxy Quest. I don't know if you ever seen that one. I always forget that he was in that. Yeah. What? What a strange cast that movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's always kind of like who got all of these incredibly talented people to do this such this such weird concept. Yeah, it's like Star Trek but family film, but I don't know. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. We don't know what it is. <laughs> we keep getting off the topic of this yeah, movie. It's okay. All right. I want to, I want to, I want to summarize for, for someone who hasn't seen the movie, just briefly overview. What is this movie about? Like, but what would you say this movie is about Chloe? Just like without like top to bottom, just general. And we, we don't have to put you on the spot if you don't. Yeah. No. So it's, I, it's a con movie, like at its core, but um, the big focus of this film is his relationship with uh, his daughter and, you know, those familial relationships and like his conscience coming back. Mm. Um, because so the movie is what happens in the movie is he and his partner Sam Rockwell uh, are doing small cons and like building money but like it's not any big scores or anything like that and then Frank his partner his protege decides that he wants to do a really big job and the job turns out to be Nicolas Cage's character is Roy. He's the Mark. Yeah. Yeah. And he cons him by hiring someone. So he had been, Roy had been previously married. And when they divorced, his wife had been pregnant. And so there's this whole elaborate plan, uh, about to get information from him, which involves a, his psychiatrist. Uh, and he hires someone to play Roy's daughter. Yeah. And they, they try to do a con, which is the, which is the con within a con, but con then within a con. they get conned. Um, the, I would say also this movie is about uh, suspending your disbelief and really just parking some of your reason on the corner to let this really strange father-daughter relationship play out and not just be freaked out by how fucked up it is the whole time. 
<laughs> no, well, I, I think it, yeah, it's, it's, it ends up not being real. So yeah. that makes it yeah. kind of less. Makes it okay. It makes it all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's, let's start from the beginning. We have two con artists, mm -hmm. Nick Cage and Sam Rockwell. And we learn that Nick Cage has OCD and probably some other stuff. And he is barely hanging on with the medicine that he has. Right. Mm -hmm. And you actually, Chloe, I think you like illuminated something for me because I wasn't thinking about this, but you said his conscience coming back and he does say that, but like, so you think that like all the OCD was like his, him, the manifestation of him not feeling great about himself anymore, like feeling more and more guilty about what he was doing. Oh yeah. Uh, so to be clear, uh, OCD is not, is not an illness that's like triggered, right? It's something that you j that you have that you're born with. It's not like, you know, a traumatic event happens and then you suddenly have OCD. Like, uh, I believe that's what the plot line for Monk, the TV show Monk, is. Mm. Um, but you know, part of the treatment for OCD and for any mental illness is like sorting through your sorting through your issues and like learning to feel good about yourself and so you know because things your your symptoms are going to be agitated uh if you are agitated and if you are not calm or happy and so of course like if you're depressed everything is going to compound for mm -hmm. you and so like when he meets his daughter and forms it meets his like fake daughter and forms a connection with her um, I think he really starts to realize how unhappy he is and realize that he needs more connection in his life and that there are other things that are more important than just like collecting enough money to retire and keeping shoes off the carpet. Yeah. Sorry, that <laughs> kind of like went a little ahead of things, but no, I was just thinking about that. But yeah, so he's like super OCDified in the top of the movie. And he's, you know, going around his apartment and he's cleaning things and whatever. And then uh, we have yeah. like Sam Rockwell coming in and just fucking shit up. And yeah. what an asshole. Just like he knows that he has OCD and he walks in there and it's just like crumbs falling in his, out of his mouth, eating this sandwich on his carpet, like doesn't even <laughs> take his shoes off. Like for me, it was like watching an improv scene and being and having someone on the yeah. side being like, "Make it worse, make it worse," you know, because exactly, like, yeah, you're not supposed to solve the problem; you're supposed to make someone else's problem worse. What I don't um, get about this con is right at the top of the movie, right? Uh, yeah, the big overall con, the con, because we got the, the back, the back the cons. cons. Yeah, the 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 uh, what's his face is con the, the the you know the long con, the big con, uh, the big con is he relied so much on on uh, Cage not being able to get his illegal pills. So, like, he was getting these illegal pills from this other psychiatrist who was some whack job, right? He relied on happenstance to somehow culminate with Cage knocking his pills into the sink, which is what happened. But Oh, yeah. But, like, he didn't have a plan to trigger this. It just, like... You know, Cage was like out of, out of ideas, so he's like, "Let me hook you up with a therapist." Like, you know, like how did that? How did what you think was his plan if Nicholas Cage didn't knock his pills in the sink? Right, like, was he gonna take his probably pills? Probably just, yeah, probably just wait until his prescription ran out. Ooh, here's a crazy idea. Oh man, what if Sam Rockwell hooked up the other illegal psychiatrist because he said it was one of these guys he knew? So yeah. what if? he was giving him stimulants or something to make the problem worse. And that's mm. why he was having those crazy mm. attacks. But yeah. it's still pretty Whoa. crazy that the plot of this movie hinges on Nicolas Cage knocking pills into the garbage disposal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this, this movie yeah. would have gone down so differently if he didn't just, like, knock them over. Yeah, this is the part where we, where we park that uh suspension yeah. of disbelief yeah, just car like... <laughs> on the corner and leave it walk away from it <laughs> i like to think that sam rockwell was in it from even before the movie started and those blue pills were all methamphetamine and he was just cranking methamphetamines getting worse and worse 
cranking anyway. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I like the relationship between the two, although it did feel a little bit like very stereotypically like odd couple. You know, you've got one who's sloppy and one who's really neat, you know? And Yeah. And I keep, I, I keep asking myself this question over and over of like, how much did Sam Rockwell's character actually care about him? Mm. Because this is his mentor. This is his partner. This is somebody that he's been working with for years and years and years. Um, but so as someone who's seen the movie before rewatching it, I was paying attention to like, what makes Roy Nicholas Cage's character a good mark? like all the rules that he lays out when he's explaining cons to his daughter are like, he breaks them. Mm. Yeah. He is incredibly and gullible for a con man. Incredibly gullible for a con man. Um, incredibly unparanoid for someone with like mental illness. Like, Which is really weird that he is teaching her like, don't trust anyone. And then he trusts his partner and his partner double crosses him. And then after that, he's like, maybe I should trust people again. <laughs> like that doesn't, it's, it's not quite a logical conclusion. Um, it's, he's, he's kind of like, he's got this, um, he's got this like, like too, he's too good. Like he's a good person. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. And he's got a good heart and like he wants to help people when he sees them. He just doesn't fit the bill of a like a con man. You know what I mean? Like he's going out of his yeah. way to help this little girl he doesn't he doesn't even know. Like, yeah. How you know. did how did he get into conning? Right. Oh, he didn't, what's the story there? He just That's seems like a nice question. dude. So yeah. yeah it just, and it, also it doesn't how fit. is he an effective con man with all of his like O C D and agoraphobia stuff? Like I feel like that would be a major like we see it when he goes to Oh, we have a clip. Oh, yes. Ooh, yeah. We have. So we have to the, a clip. To the oh, clips. That clip. To the clips. Um, right. This is the clip when he goes to these people's house to try to do, they have this, this cool con in the beginning where they do a double con where they sell, sell them something and then they show up and pretend to be police and say, oh, you got sold something that was a scam. Even though like their yeah. voices are exactly the same on the phone as they are in person. <laughs> yeah. That was well, a detail. Here is him uh, at the victim's house. All we need is the name of your bank, your account number, your signature down below. <laughs> Any luck, these guys are. Amateur, yeah, right? Yeah, just sign. Just check with the bathroom. Sign right there. And you can date it. Not very, like, intense. There you go. You all right? He's fine. Thank you both very much. Water. Everything's fine. Let's go. Thank you. You didn't take your pills, did you? They left the door open. It was bitching. It's just an open door, Roy. It was bitching. That's what I don't under. Is he saying bitchin'. he left the door open? It was bitching. What does that mean? Is that why you think he has Tourette's too? Yeah. Well, and I, I read a little bit about that, and because like that's not a typical. So a lot of times Tourette's and OCD are co are comorbid. They uh, show up together. Um, but like those ticks that he does of like. Mm. and like the little movements and the um, eye thing the eye thing and the murmurs like those those line up with more with uh Tourette's you know and this, when people yeah. sorry go ahead no oh, no 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 I cut you off uh yeah so when uh people with Tourette's are agitated like symptoms become worse I was gonna say so like there's a story that this movie's not telling that happens before all this, which is like there was a part of his life where this con man thing was actually fun for him and like he was getting something out of it. And then this is like, well, he's done it for a long, long time. He's got all this money and like it's weighing on him psychologically. 
but they never yeah. really kind of set that up very effectively in the top. I think that's what they're trying to say. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they just make There's it. There's never like, that well, moment of like, oh, I don't know how to do anything else. Yeah, and it, it's more like like this guy doesn't seem to even belong in this world. Like, how the hell did he even get here? You know what I mean? And he's more yeah. like a monk type character. Is like, well, he's a con man with OCD, like kind of thing. You know, versus anyway, quirky. Yeah, he's quirky. <laughs> I, I think it's interesting that talking about the sort of like it was bitching thing as like being a symptom of Tourette's. It's also like a very common Nicolas Cage affectation to uh, shout a word in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is why this other- character is so good for him because he's better at those like weird, jittery, uh, yelly. <laughs> Type have you humans. Seen, um, Chloe, have you seen Leaving Las Vegas? No. Okay. I this is this is interesting to me the connection between these two movies. Well, because uh, Leaving Las Vegas is him uh, playing an alcoholic, and he's mm. similarly very realistic about it. like he like it's like it's real it's really dark. It's not like a fun <laughs> movie at all. And so not I a think fun jaunt into alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's any other movies where he sort of you know has like. This is Nicolas Cage with, um, like a different uh, mental illness. I'm trying to think of something to say that isn't offensive. Well, with uh, like some kind of disability, like the, yeah, this is Nicolas Cage yeah. in a wheelchair, or like you know, yeah. I think we'll see it, him in Tiger King. We'll see Nicolas Cage with. Uh, didn't he have oh, like some, a leg problem? I don't know. Nicolas Cage or, with a limp. Nicolas Cage on meth. <laughs> on meth, yeah. You know, there was a part right before this clip that I didn't cut, uh, where he goes. I don't know if you guys remember this, where he's like, oh, some of these whack jobs. Like, he just says yeah. it, like, really loud. Yeah. Just like. I, yeah. I feel like that's one of, we, Chris and I always talk about, like, we're going to make a super cut of different themes from different things at some point. But I feel like that's a, I mean, that's a classic Nicolas Cage theme is just yelling random words. It's yeah. It's like, I'm going to yell this word. <laughs> it, that's got to be part of his real personality. <laughs> I, I'm pretty I think certain. It, I think it's, like, early morning takes, and he's, like, like sees everyone are is kind of sleepy, so he just gets out there and just yells <laughs> one word just to fuck everybody up, just to get them all awake. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. "Let's take use that take." Yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> all right. So let's 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 crank a little further through the plot. So we got a new psychiatrist. Turns out later on, this guy is part of the con. Everyone's part of the con. Everyone what is a, part uh, of the con. It's to your point, Chloe, when you were saying. Oh, I wonder how much he actually like Sam Rockwell actually cares about Nick Cage's character. Like, what an incredibly irresponsible thing to do to just like give someone who actually needs help like a fake psychiatrist and be like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah. trust me." Like, what probably a not much. Yeah, yeah. The guy was like, he, "It's like you wonder though, is he at some level actually a psychologist or a therapist, or is he just some kind of really, really, really good con man?" Yeah, I mean, he's. Uh... I mean, they got a phone number for him. They got an office space. Yeah. He used an assumed they put name. A lot. He has to have done some sort of research into this. Like, but it's a lot of his behavior from the beginning was like a pretty laid back psychiatrist. Yeah. Yeah. Puts his feet up. I feel like Sam Rockwell told him to put his feet up, but he was like, "Yeah, you know that's gonna piss him off." <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, um, so and then we... it turns out later of like, you know this, you know this footrest is an antique, right? Oh. And and then is like, you're a criminal, aren't you? And it's like, but you uh, knew that. You jump in. There's a big leap that you made there that you wouldn't have been able to do if you hadn't already known. See, like, what do you think about all this stuff? Like, why, why it wasn't an obvious to Nick Cage? And like, his line at the end, maybe, maybe we can get to it at the end. But his line at the end, maybe might explain all this, where he says, like, "I gave it to you." Like, he was, yeah. He maybe he just needed to get out. Like, it, and that's kind of like why he let all this stuff slide, even though he noticed it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, what's Wait, what with the, the pipe? I gave it to you. He says it's. Our, uh, we have the clip, but we'll play it later. But uh, anyway, I, I just got too far ahead. Okay, what about yeah, his pipe? Right. The therapist has fucking smokes a pipe in the office. They're smoking indoors constantly in this fucking movie. It's like, hey, what it's the hell? it's 2003. It's a different oh world. God. Everything's free and loose. <laughs> like, 
use as many pipes and weird fashion accessories as you want to. No one's going <laughs> to I know, you. I know, Chloe, you have a, a lot of thoughts on the fashion uh, for, for this yes. movie. Tell us I your do. favorite looks. Okay. Um, most of them were from Sam Rockwell. And I wonder a little bit too of like how much of it is Sam Rockwell being like, I'm just going to walk on set with some Oakleys today. Or like he shows up with a Kanga hat and is like, <laughs> this is good for this scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Oakley's Kanga hat. We saw a bowling shirt. We saw a snakeskin shirt. We saw a straw cowboy hat. Yep. Chris got the straw cowboy hat for a second there. And wait, let me check my list. Hold on. I did make a list. A lot of ill-fitting pants. Yep. Nobody's pants fit right. Yep. And then at the very end, the daughter shows up with those like awful little red chunks of hair. Mm -hmm. Their little red streaks. Ugh. It it's seems really... I remember that thinking they were cool. I remember thinking that those were cool and I see them now and I'm like, it just looks like you clipped them in and it doesn't, there's no discernible placement pattern. It's <laughs> not good. This is like peak, you know, Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, like that era of fashion. I feel like this is really what we're working with. Yeah. Um, oh, so good. That, that cowboy <laughs> yeah that that honestly is less offensive to me the specific cowboy image that chris is showing than like the what do you call the kangol hat is that what you said? the kanga hat yeah kanga hat, yeah um all right so we got to get to the point where we meet the kid um so yes. there's this whole thing where which makes more sense now once we realize it's a con where he finds out he has a kid or he he talks about how he might have a kid and the doctor's like oh maybe i'll just call them and find out for you and so the doctor calls the family to find out which is sketchy but you guys so many hipaa violations yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you so can't many hipaa violations you can't call someone up and say hey i am this person's therapist you can't fucking do that like I my therapist even, can't even if sees me in public cannot even like say hi like they can't even fucking acknowledge your existence yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, and they and he says it too he's like well you told you told him you told her that you were my therapist and he's like well i can't lie <laughs> yeah. i mean this was another big big uh park you know disbelief whatever because like he was relying on on nicholas cage not to directly reach out to that woman himself yeah yeah like he was and he never does. absolutely never not once during this movie does he reach out to his daughter's mother it's crazy yeah. that he was relying that the therapist you know, well he does it. at the very end but other than that yeah it's so crazy that, that he was like oh yeah he'll ask the therapist i know him that's what he'll do like yeah well we gotta keep the plot moving forward right <laughs> yeah speaking of that we meet the kid the kid is played by allison loman uh i believe is her name i made the so i so i, I don't know if i've said this but i've never seen this movie before until last uh -huh. night um i or two nights ago i made the mistake of googling how old is allison loman <laughs> and figuring out that she was not 14 Ooh. she was 24 <laughs> and then i i also knew that there was a twist to this movie though i didn't know anything about it i was like okay well some that's clearly related because why would Something's they hire up. a 24 year old and I, I spent most of the movie being like oh it's the the doctors doing the con and i was like oh sam rockwell's doing the con and that turned out it's everybody's doing the con everyone is doing the con everyone's doing the con do the con yeah um so then we have a lot of like um father daughter scenes with a woman who's 10 years older than she says she is and yeah. isn't actually related to him yeah um, well I, I was just trying to look up and see if sam rockwell dated allison loman but oh, i don't boy. think she did i just saw a lot of pictures with them together but i think they just had a affectionate friendly relationship where they pick each other up and kiss each other on the cheek and that's it in pictures 
Yeah, that tracks. That makes sense. <laughs> Uh, weird thing about Alison Loman, the actress, she's uh, took like a huge break from acting in um, like 2009 was she had a bunch of movies. She was in Drag Me to Hell and she didn't do anything else again until 2015 and 2016. And then she hasn't done anything since then. So I, I wonder what she's been up to. So she yeah. hasn't done any acting in a long time. I mean, it could just be she uh, maybe she got Weinstein or something. Ooh. I know it's a really dark thing to say. But it was maybe, that era. Maybe she's just living a simple life off of yeah. the royalties and off such. Off the magic man money. Oh. Also, th- this is the picture I thought uh, I was like, hmm, maybe they she's, dated. She did. She did. <laughs> she had a kid in Evidence. 2010. So that might be part of, oh, part of it. So she Sam stopped. Rockwell. Yeah. Took a break. That That's probably what's going on. She had to give the Sam Rockwell. She did probably. not have isn't Having she? a kid takes up some time, especially if it's Sam Rockwell's kid. Yeah, oh, he's gonna you be- know they're gonna be a wild card. Yeah, you can't you can't pin that kid down. <laughs> also, I wonder if they call. Never mind. I was gonna make a dick joke about Matchstick Man. Never mind. I won't do it. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you um, for the, the effort. <laughs> well, yeah, she. So, and I was like a little bit worried about rewatching this just because of like. This is a difficult thing to portray without being creepy about it of like, you know, an older man having, forming a relationship with a younger woman that is supposed to be her daughter, his daughter. Um, And more than anything, I was kind of like disturbed at her for like, she like, she's kind of an asshole. She like shows up and like, moves in moves in goes through all his stuff why was she in his underwear drawer that wasn't necessary let me just shift his underwear around a little bit why did we do that and then he makes her a whole breakfast and she's like i'm just gonna eat ben and jerry's it's interesting because it's like what of this is uh what was her character's name again? Angela? Angela. Angela. Yeah. yeah. What of this is her playing Angela and what of this is whatever her real persona is, you know? Yeah. I mean, she yeah. has to be in this their character in the movie 100% has to be a sociopath. Like cannot be cuz she's lying so effectively and like just yeah. without hesitation and just like totally manipulative and, and whatever like you know crying feels, like emotionally in front of him paid to do this like maybe she's just an actress i mean there's there's like stuff you will do you know for money and there's stuff you do because you just love it and i think i mean th- that it's like you i mean i don't know he just that, enjoyed i think she just enjoyed nicholas cage destroying that man's like heart just yeah just because she said she did say this was a one time thing. Yeah. They they uh so crazy to me. Like at some point, if you have a conscience, you're gonna say, Hey guys, I know I'm doing this for the money, you know, but man, like, you know, this guy really does need help. Maybe, you know, we shouldn't have a fake therapist and maybe I shouldn't be playing his fake daughter. Like, you know, maybe we should rob him a different way. Like he's a broken man. He'd probably just, you know, give us the code if we beat him up. You know what I mean? Like Oh, yeah. Also, the fact that this hinges on Nicolas Cage deciding to give this code to his daughter. Oh, the signature part? The signature part was, like, so stupid. Like, add another signature. Wait, remind me the signature part? He goes to the bank, and he's, like, he's signing in. She's trying to get the code over his shoulder, and and he's, like, let me add another signature to my account, and fucking adds her signature. So all she needs is a passcode. Like, He's what? so, and like, so one of the things that he was talking about when you're looking for a good mark of like, is like people who are lonely and Nick Cage is lonely. lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Do you think, how about this? Ooh, question. Do you think that yeah. Sam Rockwell was making this up as he went along, meaning that he only had the therapist planned and after he started learning more about Nick Cage's past, he set up an actor to play his daughter. He set up all this other stuff to then keep the con going. Yeah. Maybe he thought the therapist would somehow get the code and that was his end game. Yeah, I think that I think that, that had to be part of it of like 
he was using the therapist to like mine information. And then when they found something that they could grab onto, they went with it. Yeah. Because I think Sam Rockwell's character knew that he had been married before, but I don't think he knew that there had been a kid. Yeah. And there wasn't a kid in the end, I guess, but it's true. <laughs> See, I think I'm like, uh, Oh, you were muted. <laughs> Sorry. I was say, we learned at the end that the kid, that the, his ex-wife, uh, I guess lost the baby. Yeah. He never actually had a kid, which yeah. is a choice. I think like, I think they should have been yeah. like, I think she should have said like, Hey, I had an abortion. You were an alcoholic and you left me. I just, I didn't want to deal with this bullshit. You know, but they're like, oh, I lost the baby. See, it's not my, you know, like, I feel like that was the thing. I guess it was 2003, yeah. but, you know. I mean, and it's got to be a little, you know, his backstory has to be a little tragic that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, <laughs> or it could have just had like another unrelated kid. I think, I think that, I think that's probably, they were just like, well, this is the simplest option here. And this movie is already so complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like another 14 year old kid. But if, You know what else? You know what else about that when he goes, uh, so from the moment that he's at the grocery store and he only goes to this one checkout line, this shop girl, right? Um, she, and then at the end, he goes to see his ex-wife and the shop girl and the ex-wife look the same, <laughs> look the same. Dead oh, ringer yeah. for each other. Why do they do that? that's so confusing <laughs> that poor shop girl is inheriting like just a mess she of a man getting all his trauma and she cleaned him up i guess because at the end he seemed he wasn't ticking or anything and he was you know he seemed pretty happy yeah she, she did yeah. good <laughs> we have uh we, we end with uh another scene of nicholas cage fondling a pregnant woman's belly um a la con air which we haven't done that yet but has uh <laughs> very very awkward pregnant woman belly scene we're gonna have um, to cut those all together pregnant nick cage interacting <laughs> with pregnant women bellies yeah um, so we we have we have a lot of stuff with the kid uh he teaches her how to con they do a little con at the um laundromat mm -hmm. uh but obviously she already knows how to con because she is a con artist already and i don't know why did they have an office space why for the fuck did they have for legitimacy of what? Because like the company they're pretending to be is a criminal. You know they're pretending they're selling things that it's illegal. Oh, and, I see. Like you wouldn't so want. They a were trying to sell the uh, water filtration systems from. Yeah, like why do they have that space? It's just another. It doesn't uh, even line up with his his cover story, which is that he does antiques. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, own an antique shop. I mean, at some point you're going to get audited. You got to launder <laughs> well, that money. Like, I mean, I think it's, I think we've all learned uh, from lockdown that it's just nice to have a place to go, you know? <laughs> yeah. You got to structure, separate personal <laughs> work life. He's like, this is my workplace. This is where I con people. This is yeah. where I just don't watch TV and sit alone in the dark. Okay. <laughs> Well, and I guess the other thing about it too is that they have this is a they still have landlines at this point, right? And so if if anything ever goes wrong, they can't trace it back to his house. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, they must have gotten a consultant for this. You movie. forgot about landlines, didn't you? Yeah, I forgot about landlines. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Even though I'm like a solid ten years older than both of you, or whatever. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> whatever it is. Oh yeah, what are you junior in college in 2003? Is that what you said? Well. Let's move on, but they said that <laughs> they said that I bet they had a, a consultant on this movie because they had like these specific con, cons. Cons, a con, con a consultant, a consultant. But maybe that guy was like, "You need an office." So then they traced out. Maybe it's like you said, they traced a the landline back to the you know the office. Yeah, we and we haven't we haven't talked about so we haven't talked about the the, the what we think is the big con in the yeah. movie, but is actually the. This in the Russian doll of cons. This is the yeah. second layer from the top, which is some sort of like currency trading thing, right? Yeah, I skimming off the top of the exchange rate. 
I didn't follow what I, I didn't follow what they were actually doing or what they told the guy they were doing. I, I think it's similar to things. Superman <laughs> three in Superman three. Uh, uh, that famous comedian um, Richard Pryor makes yep. a computer program that when they do transactions at the bank, a lot of sometimes uh, in stock market trades or whatever, they end up with a fraction of a penny left. So I think his, his thing is like, okay, there's a bunch of transactions that happen and we round down to the nearest cent and there's actual money that accumulates that's under a fraction of a dollar or whatever. And so I think that's what he's saying. When you do these international currency exchanges, he's like skimming the, the fractions of pennies off the top after they accumulate like Richard Pryor did. You know, for some people, understanding money is like watching a foreign film without subtitles. <laughs> I'm one of those people for sure. But I will say that it, it does seem like they're, they're, they're building it up, right? And then it yeah. ends up being the main thing that they do is they exchange briefcases and he shows the mark, a briefcase full of money, and then switches it out with a briefcase not full of money, hands it to him. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the big thing. That's oh. the big thing is they just give him an empty bat. A big... move called the old um. switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the old suitcase swap <laughs> they and they and it's it's not very successful because uh the guy finds out and then now here's a question i have for you guys was the guy who was being conned oh yeah was he in on the scheme yeah, yeah otherwise he'd be dead con? otherwise he'd be dead that was something that, like, when I was watching at the end, when the the guy, the Mark, comes to Nick Cage's house and then gets shot, and then Sam Rockwell is immediately like, he's not going to make it. Like, <laughs> you can't assess that so quickly. You're not a doctor. But so he doesn't actually get shot? How does, so the, how does... Uh, Squibs. Angel so... Angela never actually shoots that dude. She just—it just looks like she shoots him. Is it's, that yeah? The... It's blanks. Yeah. And he had a squib in his pocket, and he goes, "Oh shit!" Ugh. Yeah. So what would have happened? Okay, so there's this scene where they—they're at the airport. They do the exchange. The guy figures out that his that his thing is empty, which he theoretically should have known because he's in on the con. Yeah. And then he chases after Nicolas Cage and Angela. What yeah. would have happened if they if he had caught up with them? Right, he would have been like, "Ah, I'm gonna hit you!" Like at a haunted house, like like a haunted hayride, when yeah. they get too close to the thing and they have to kind of stop and, and telegraph what they're doing. Like There's not gonna touch you. It's, it's like that. That's what would happen. Yeah. I guess could he have? Uh, could he, could the con if he had gotten him and whopped him over the head? In the could the, the con, con could have, have gone from him, there and just skip the next part and then yeah. took him to the fake hospital. Oh, yeah. Jeez, that's interesting. Or yeah. was there something about Angela needing to shoot the guy that enabled him to give the psychiatrist his code? I think... It's best not to think too Yeah. Deeply. <laughs> they really could have just beat the shit out of him and yeah. taken his code. Yeah. From, from minute it's one. A very elaborate plan. Well, maybe that's how we know that Sam Rockwell actually cares about him because he didn't just try to beat the code out of him. He tried to subtly manipulate him into sharing it instead. I <laughs> <laughs> also, I think I might not be right about this. I talk out of my ass all the time, but I think anytime you have any transaction over $10,000, maybe it doesn't apply with safety deposit boxes, it gets reported mm -hmm. to the FBI. So I don't know, like, I don't yeah. think the bank would have just been like, here's a million dollars, you know? But if it's yeah. a safety deposit box, I think it's his. I yeah, think maybe it's it doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's safety it's deposit really box. It's not really theirs. It's like, you can put anything in a bank in the bank, in the safety deposit box, and the bank isn't keeping track of what's in it. Yeah, that's you true. You know what's funny is that in 2003, a million dollars was was so much money. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the richest man in 2003 had 500 million dollars or something like that. Or not God, even a, not even bonkers. 
um, one million dollars. Um, that's where we're at. Yeah. We, uh, what's it called? Um, I think this is. Uh, oh, oh, we did miss one clip, Chris. Uh, oh, oh let's go one. back. What yeah, sorry, that? let's go back. Oh, for the pills. Uh, no, the one where he and uh, just to show a little bit of the 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 uh, Nicholas Cage and daughter relationship when she so she's like sneaking out. Mm-hmm. And then she comes back in, and he has mm-hmm. a little he has a little freak out. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that is wrong. What you did, and uh, you're a nosy Parker, and, and 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 that's no way for a young lady to behave. And uh, shame on you. This is really good. <laughs> shame, Just on shame, you. shame. And that's his that's, dadding. Just, just what's uh, a nosy Parker? I was nosy like Parker Parker. Posey, Parker <laughs> Pygmies. And while while we've oh. got the clip, oh Chris, I was gonna say while we've got the clip thing up, um, we're right at the. So we we've talked about up until like the guy chases after him at the airport. Um, so then uh, he run he runs out of his pills and he can't track down the doctor. I think, uh, and mm-hmm. so he decides he's gonna talk his way into more pills at the pharmacy. And we have this really great classic Nicolas Cage freak out. This is top 10 yes. Nick Cage freak outs in a movie. I did not yes. expect it out of this film. I made Chris yes. rewind this so I could record it on video just in case we couldn't find it online. Hi, honey, it refilled this. I don't have a prescription. Sir, sure. but... please wait your turn. Uh, I know, I know, but th- this is an emergency. Hey, buddy, ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and being until you pissed blood? <laughs> <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> it's it's a, a Guys, classic. One more time. Random, yeah. W- one more time. <laughs> Hi, honey. Refill this. I don't have a prescription. Sir, <laughs> please wait your turn. I know. I know. But th- this is an emergency. Hey, buddy. Ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and beat until you pissed blood? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that one always gets me. Oh yeah. That's, That's so good. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. That was yeah. a good moment. We've watched a lot of relatively subdued Nick Cage movies recently, so it's nice to to have a little bit of a more a little intense bit of spice. A little bit of spice. Yeah. Um Oh, do you remember when right. Sam Rockwell goes, Oh, that internet thing's a fad? I was like, Oh, how old is this movie? Was there no internet back then? It's like what? <laughs> I feel like that's probably like a, a joke on 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 him, you know what I mean? Like we're supposed to think like, ah, oh, it's not a fad. We know that now. It's two thousand. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Oh yeah. When is this? Wait. So, when did this movie take place? I assume two thousand three ish. Yeah. I right. I wanted yeah. to t- fashion. You you uh you you hit on something, Chloe, which was the pygmies thing. I wanted to make a supercut of him saying pygmies because it's such a weird expletive yeah. that he came up with. Yeah. Also, is it not a, is it's, it like a racial slur now or i don't i don't i think it's a it's a it's like a group of people like a like a an ethnic group it like a real life ethnic no i'm serious like the the pygmy i don't know if I'm that's looking the it right, up. right yeah we should probably look this up i don't want to <laughs> let's not take chances on this one is pygmy offensive i think it's if you would call someone who isn't a pygmy a pygmy that would be offensive like actually from the african culture okay let's so, not go down this road yeah, guys let's we, just not say it anymore and walk away yeah we don't mean to to offend anybody that is not our goal i mean we, Nick yeah, Cage says it 40 learn. times in the film it so. was just a really strange choice and that's, you know, and that's something also that's like not, uh, that's a common misconception about Tourette's. Like people don't pick, people don't pick the words that they say, they can't control the words they say. And they, it's, um, a lot of it is, um, uh, a lot of it ends up being words that are like socially unacceptable. Um, but I don't know where the pygmies thing came from. Yeah. 
Oh boy. Like, I don't know how to justify that at all. So, so we, uh, we have, we, we end up with this big dramatic scene where the guy who they tried to con shows up at Nick Cage's house. Uh, Sam Rockwell has been beaten up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Allison Lohman's character freaks out and shoots him. Yeah, they were really hoping that Nick Cage like didn't have a gun on him or a second gun somewhere in the house. Yeah. There's so a lot of ways this could have gone wrong. Yeah. So many ways. Um, and he gets whopped over the head and ends up in the hospital. <laughs> Which where... this was like... This blew my mind because I was like, they just made a room? <laughs> on a roof <laughs> when my like 15 year old head I was like hold on they just put up four walls wherever they wanted to the room <laughs> that's bonkers and that's and then and then he has the thing where the like psych- psychiatrist asked him for the code to a safe deposit box I don't really remember no, why because he thought all right so he thought the cops had him so he was yeah. like, and he thought his daughter was going to go to jail for shooting the guy, for killing the guy. So he yeah, was that's like. two more people that had to get paid by Sam Rockwell. Like, how far is this money going to go? I mean, oh my God. obviously he kind of ran off with most of it, but. Yeah. I think what's what's really like telling about that whole situation is Sam Rockwell did not give, give a shit about this guy because he, like, maybe this is like pre the time where people really thought about concussions, but like this guy got hit so hard in the head that he was knocked out for a period of hours and they just left him oh, alone yeah. in on the roof of a building, like un, unattended asleep. Like he could have just went into a coma and died up there. Yeah. Movie yeah. concussions are not like real life concussions. Yeah. They're not. <laughs> and it's like, sorry about the old wa- wallop on the head, man. In his letter. It's yeah. Like, Dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, small tangent, just a reminder that, Home Alone is not an accurate portrayal of things that the human body can withstand. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great just to show kids that you can get hit in the head with a paint can and just you're fine. I, you're just <laughs> you're fine. There, there's you're this totally movie reminded fine. me of. Do you guys remember Mission Impossible where they had the fake hospital? What w- remind me which one that was? Because we just watched that recently, right? It was Ghost. No, it was uh, Rogue Nation. Okay. I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Rogue Nation. No, I think it was I think it was Ghost Protocol because it was the one where with, with the Burj Khalifa, right? That's the one you and I watched together recently. No, but this is the one before. This is the one we have watched. Never mind. I think it was. Okay. Ro- anyway, I know exactly. I was thinking about the fake hospital too. Love love a fake hospital in a movie. Good old love fake, fake hospital. hospital. Uh, that fake hospital trope. Do you think so they wakes- invented it? This movie? Do you think they invented the fake hospital trope? That one came first. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, they invented that. Ridley Scott invented the fake hospital (laughs) in 2003. Write it down. It's in the Wikipedia. Like a real hospital, but it's used for crimes. (laughs) You will die. And no one is qualified to treat you. (laughs) You better not need a blood transfusion because there's no blood. It's on the roof. (laughs) They got one IV, one beep machine. Yeah. Machine. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so, so he deep. wakes pretty up pretty sure it then... doesn't do nothing it just kind of makes noises you know, <laughs> you know. it's for realism <laughs> you know there's always a beep yeah it's like why am I on telemetry there's nothing wrong with my heart shut up it's alright <laughs> Um. so he wakes up he's got a funny hat on little stocking cap thing right yeah. And uh, he uh, decides to break out. And that's when we realize the whole thing was a con. This is the big reveal. He's on the roof. There's a con inside a con inside a con. Or outside a con, I guess. The outside con was had some inside cons. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like, how long was he out, too? Because... There had to be multiple yeah. people going to different locations to clear out all those things as quick as they could. Because the second he woke up, he went right to the bank. Yeah. Well, yeah. And maybe they did have someone who was slightly qualified that maybe gave him something that knocked him out. That's true. Yeah. For a while. Maybe the therapist was like a general purpose doctor of sorts. Like sketchy yeah. doctor. 
Well, yeah, it's just like you have to have a you have to have a set doctor when you're recording a movie. You have to have a con doctor when you're doing a con. Yeah, yeah. it's important to, to make sure that nobody gets hurt that isn't supposed to get hurt. Cover your bases. I, some trivia is that the pills that they use for this movie are Benadryl, so they probably just gave him a bunch of Benadryl. I mean, that always knocks me out. I knew <laughs> I knew that looked like Benadryl. Remember, I was like, oh, that looked that's a Benadryl. It was like a little purple, a little pink pill. Yeah, that's a Benadryl. I mean, that's sure. what a Benadryl looked like in 2004. I don't know if it's still the same, but but wait, they were giving the <laughs> actors actual Benadryl. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's a bad idea. Was mm-hmm. Nick Cage like taking Benadryls? I. Mm, that's a good that point. would knock your ass out like you'd be like oh i should have taken all that better <laughs> drug in a movie if you were taking a bunch of <laughs> just give him sugar pills like or give him like a vitamin a like you don't need to get it's a great point I, well maybe you didn't actually maybe you didn't actually swallow maybe yeah. oh, he did the old done. cage the old cage the old switcheroo, switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm about to do something it's super unprofessional i totally am running out of battery and i need to grab my power that's okay. Oh, do it, man. Do it. I'll oh, right man. Back. Oh, man. So unprofessional. Don't talk shit uh, about me while I'm gone. <laughs> while she's gone, the doves will fly. Let the doves fly across the screen. Doves fly. <laughs> I'm so, going to, because I'll ask you this. Um, and I, 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 uh, I, I guess I can ask this, but um, did you have you ever seen the movie? I feel like you're more likely to have seen this than, than she has. Uh, have you seen the movie The Spanish Prisoner? No. So that's a it's a older movie 97 it stars steve martin's in it it's a david mamet film but uh it's a it's a it's a really good con con inside a con inside a con one um and when chloe talked about like the movie that shows you that con artists can be con too that's like how i felt about when i watched that movie i was just like oh my god this is unexpected i can't believe it Anyway, that's a good one. I like that movie a lot. Are, can we make a link between this movie and Con Air just because the word Con? Okay. Um, <laughs> so the characters are really different. Yeah, I don't know if this one t- links in. But what if, you- what if Nicolas Cage's character in this is actually one of the other cons on the plane? Do you have any similarities with any that's of them? That's a very beautiful idea. I think there might have been a con artist on that plane. You know, I was thinking, though, this movie does talk about the person being a former drunk who had who like punched his wife and potentially had a child with her. What if like you cut leaving Las Vegas before the scene at the end and this is the future of that character in Elizabeth Shue? Mm, mm-hmm. I buy I it. Know. I buy it. We're, Expanding we're, we're, the cage verse. We're That's working where we're on trying a, to draw connections. We're working on the ultimate cage mashup of all the films that you make into one film. <laughs> I see. A lot of them revolve around Con Air, surprisingly. Yeah, Con Air. Um, a, lot hap- a lot happened in that film. You know, there's a lot to connect to. Oh my God, so much happened in that film. I can't wait till we do that film. That, that one's that one's coming up in the next few months for sure. <laughs> oh, good. Um, all right, so we, we have the big reveal. Mm-hmm. We see him visit his, his safe deposit box. It's all cleaned out. Sam Rockwell's apartment. It's all cleaned out. Everything's gone. They stole Everything's all his stuff. Gone. Yeah. And then he goes and visits his ex-wife and there's no kid. There, there's no kid. And he and didn't we... think at one point when he was hanging out that by the schoolyard all sketchy. At any point he'd be like, hey, I should contact the mom just so this is legit. So that if these people don't contact, like, you know. Like reach out to the mom. She's not gonna be like, "Who is this guy?" He really did not want to talk to her. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, he did punch her in the face apparently because he says "black eye" that I gave her. So. Oh yeesh. no! I missed that. Yeah. Yeah. I, Ooh, I got that. Yeah. It, <laughs> we uh yeah so um. And then, and then we are at the epilogue of this movie, which is almost definitely uh, prefaced by one of the crazy transitions in this movie. Did you guys pick up on the fucking PowerPoint transitions between scenes? Like, like there were a couple like, woo 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 between the scenes. There were a couple of very cartoonish uh, aspects to this movie. That that's one of them. The other one is like sometimes when Nick Cage 
there were a couple of times when Nick Cage moved that it, it like he would do something and there would be like a weird cartoon sound effect with it when he was like having a freak out and I was like it happened I only counted twice which seems like a weird choice yeah <laughs> rule of threes um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> at least give me a third one um some weird choices there weird choices on that one yeah I actually have some of those PowerPoint transitions in in OBS. Like you can do those, but they have, they had like the like oh a, a diagonal slide to a fade, like something like that. You know what I mean? Like three yeah. months later, diagonal slide fade. Like like definitely yeah. PowerPoint presentation from ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. I, the editing of this movie is really funny. Yeah. It's um, hot new technology. Did you say that when we we're watching it, Maggie? You're like, this is the first film ever edited on PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ridley Scott invented fake hospitals and PowerPoint movies. Hey, <laughs> the guy was ahead of his time. It's true. What if what if his other movies were like that? Like Alien was edited like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god imagine taking a powerpoint and, and just making a, every slide a frame of a film and like hand painting them all sorry i just my mind just went to a crazy place it would be like a flip book but uh yeah. digital wow yeah. 30 frames for one second makes you think about makes animation you think. Who makes you think <laughs> all right so do oh so, we do have a clip of the epilogue oh yeah well, oh, well okay well Yes, we could talk a little bit first about it, but yeah, I just want to summarize. So, so we what we learn about uh, him afterwards is that he has married the checkout clerk. They are having a baby. Yeah, and, and he works at a carpet store. Yeah, which yeah, like, that rug, that rug that they bought, the cheetah print rug. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about the significance of him working at a carpet store, though? Because he, he does. Sorry, my dog is. <laughs> my dog's coughing. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. Doggy, doggy COVID. Oh, oh no. I hope no, not. Can't get it. One. Uh, that's good. I, yeah. Can cats get it? I've heard there's some. Cats can get it. Okay. Yeah. Man. So. Wait, so yeah, yeah they bought a superior species. It's fine. The dude, the dude from uh, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, her. Ran Crans is his name. Oh, that guy shows up at the end. Oh, yeah. His hair was wild. Oh yeah, in that clip. Um, I feel like I mean I feel like him becoming a salesman is like that makes sense. Like because he's it makes up. yeah. Did you? Um, but the carpet thing, I feel like it's a tie-in kind of to... Uh, I, I feel like he spends so much time obsessing over his carpet. I don't know. Maybe oh, it is. So he knows yeah. a lot about how to get stains out, What's what the best he kind of carpet is. He cares about carpets. Mm -hmm. So he sat there and he's like, what are my useful skills? <laughs> ah, I know what carpets. What do I know about? Good what do I really cleaning. understand <laughs> in the depths of my soul? And he's looking down. And he sees the carpet. And you're like, carpet. Well, yeah, because he also had that moment in the psychiatrist's office where he's looking at the, the carpet there and is like, you've got a stain on your <laughs> carpet. And and this goes back, this harkens back to a simpler time when a woman working as a cashier and a man working at, like as a carpet salesman, you know, yeah. could afford Classic a two pairing. bedroom house. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they could afford a two bedroom house in LA. But uh, that's yeah. no longer the case. <laughs> They'd have roommates or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. If we oh. find so so he's he's in the carpet salesman. He seems like he has a happy life, and then we have uh, Allison Loman shows up to buy a carpet. This was a weird scene. What did you this guys think? Really of weird scene? scene. You want to play play a clip from the oh, scene? Yeah, all I, clip. Have, all I have is the very end of their interaction. Oh, okay. That's fine. The cre what I think is to be the creepiest part of the interaction. Yes. Oh. Don't you want to know my name? I know your name. I'll see you, Dad. What does that mean? What is 
sunset. The waving. <laughs> Let's talk about I know your name. What does that mean? I think it was meant to be wholesome. Yeah. This moment of like, you're Angela and you're always going to be Angela. Yeah. Like, I choose to believe the lie because it was nicer than the truth and I got something out of it, or I don't know. I gave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like, yeah. this guy, I, I don't know. It just, it registered really. Either that or he found out what her real name was. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. <laughs> and she, she could have done because he's a con man. And she goes home and his place is. Her place is just like totally <laughs> empty. <laughs> Told you I knew your name. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, uh, it's the, his reaction. So at some point during the interaction, like, so she comes out, she's obviously been 14 for the rest of the movie. She comes out and she's wearing like a very tight dress. You know, she looks. Her yeah, this was an over exaggeration, I think, because they were like we have to contrast that we have to make her look like an actual adult. And I think this was like, they went a little too far. They didn't need to. Yeah. They're yeah. Like, She's a very young looking actress. So I think it, it yeah. probably, but that's where, so he says to her, I think he says something like you look grown. And she says, I am grown. And he like, doesn't really react to learning that she isn't even 14, you know? Yeah. Well, but he he figured out her name. He probably figured out her age. <laughs> That's true. He probably uh, spent a lot of time. Well, what I'm thinking is though, like, like the person that like who she is as a person, right? Yeah. You know, you get to this point where this guy, you know, got something out of it or whatever. You know, like he he chooses to kind of like you know accept it, and he doesn't have you know he forgives you instantly. Yeah. Uh, the way she takes that is kind of like, cool, see ya, dad. Like, Bye. Not, if she had any conscience at all, she'd be like, thank you. This was really eating me up inside. I felt terrible about all this. And yeah. the fact that you don't care, just I, a weight is lifted. No, she's like, cool, got my carpet. Everything turned out fine. Yeah, it's is like, it, ugh. He also just like doesn't seem to care. Like, he... he his yeah. reaction to like finding this person that conned him out of so much money is just to be like, remember when you were my daughter? Yeah. yeah. Good Those times. Were good times. <laughs> well, and so, and that's the other thing too, is that like, this movie is about him. This is about his character because we have no idea. We don't find out anything about her backstory. And it's very clear that she has some stuff that she's working through. True. um but you know we don't know anything about her and he's kind of like you know there's this continued theme of him believing what he wants to believe and so at the end like at the beginning of it it's like he's not conscious that he's doing it that he's like believing this unbelievable thing of like my daughter is alive and suddenly showed up and like the psychiatrist is not being weird right now and then at the end he makes this conscious choice of like i'm gonna just pretend that this was the thing like that we had this that you're still actually my daughter in this moment type thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. which i think is taking the power in the situation being like choosing like well i'm not gonna let what you did really affect me I'm going to take the good things from this that I can and screw you kind of, I guess too. <laughs> but yeah, you know, who knows? Cause I mean, where do you go from that? You know, it's like, Oh, you're actually 24. Well, maybe we could go out and get that ice cream sometime. Like, ooh. Yeah. yeah, I know that becomes let's, like an age player situation. It's not yeah. good. Let's have weird dinner with all the important people in our lives. Oh, how do you two know each other? Well, you'll never believe it. <laughs> I pretended to be 14 for several months. Or no, she just creepily goes, he's my dad. That's what she would do. <laughs> it's definitely what she would do. And then you they'd make out and it'd be fucked up. She has a real dad. Does she have a real dad? No, yeah. that girl has probably so many I daddy go... issues. <laughs> like... Yeah. Oh. I, I just... 
sorry somebody finally cared about her which is which is now why she's able to have this healthy relationship with the dude from the cabin in the woods <laughs> <laughs> buying your carpet or yeah. is she scamming him that's what we don't really uh she is 100 percent scamming asks, him he asks her are you scamming him and she's like nah but like maybe yeah nah, i mean is it lying. is kind of a scam that he's paying rent yeah she's buying the furniture but I don't well, know. Well, I guess I don't know what 2003 rent looked like. You know, I thought of something while you guys were talking. Uh, hmm. Another cage thread, Meg, that we have yet to pull, which is like a huge one. I hope you write this down. I just already did. Having a forgotten, illegitimate daughter with a lover from ages ago. Wicker Man in this movie. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Those two movies are like this when you really think about wow. it. Honestly, both, uh, that's uh, my other favorite Nicolas Cage movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> that was our first episode. We were like, we need to start with, with the big guns. They both featured like this hapless cage who in the end becomes false victim. And like, oh, well, it's much more likable in this movie. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, much more also likable. much less of an idiot even but though matchstick he's... man wicker men those are almost the same fucking title mm-hmm. who's the director of wicker man ridley Scott. i don't recall no <laughs> <laughs> it didn't have a director it didn't it was, have a director it was a movie. <laughs> whatever they want they just improvised that movie <laughs> <laughs> the director was in a bear suit the whole time and nobody <laughs> nobody knew who it was it was ridley scott in a bear suit I mean that is a different and that is a different entity entirely oh my and god regular ridley scott when he puts on the bear suit he becomes, he becomes the bear that's why all his movies are so different is because some are in the bear suit and some are in the human suit oh no it's he's got to have more than one animal suit yeah oh he is probably there... has an alien suit i wonder if there's well. another like cage in a, like a mascot uniform is another thread out there i don't really know Oh, I know he dresses as Batman kind of in kick ass. That's that's one. Yeah. yeah. And then he he is Spider-Man in Spider one of the Spider-Man movies. That kind of counts. The cartoons will have to figure out how to handle at some point. That's yeah. Be- um I so I'm curious guys. Yeah. Uh m- this is mostly for Chloe, but I'm also here curious to hear Chris. So how did this movie hold up versus your memory of it? How long ago did you last watch it? Boy, I have not watched it. It's probably since two thousand four. Since two thousand four, yeah. I mean, it's probably been at least ten years since the last time I saw it. Because I, I mentioned this before that like I loved this movie, but no one has ever heard of it. So I kind of like stopped talking about it because there's no one cared about it. <laughs> And look where you ended up. <laughs> look where I am now. Take that. I'm on a care about <laughs> uh, um, I have a cut. There are a couple movies like this for me where I'm like super psyched about them, but nobody's heard of them. And I really have to do a lot of work to convince people to watch them. And then once they do, they're like, oh, no, this is great. And I was like, yeah, I know. Um. Anyway, I think I still really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think it. It's uh, we lost. Obviously, made a lot of uh, progress, you know, socially since this movie came <laughs> out. So there's a there, you know, but overall, like I didn't. I wasn't as creeped out as I expected to be with like the weird father daughter relationship um i always love sam rockwell no matter what he's doing uh i think it held up pretty well i was i still really enjoyed it. and it was also really cool to go back and watch him like no the con there was the con happening yeah yeah um there was sam clearly rockwell. a lot of thought put into that even though some of those loose ends don't exactly tie up yeah he he uh sam rockwell does this like little like 
he's like does this villain dance thing i don't know if you've like yeah. there's a lot of movies where he's a villain and he dances in yeah. like the same way is that kind of a that's kind of the same rockwell thing oh yeah he well he actually had like a little dance number in charlie's angels oh yeah i remember that yeah i was like i think that was when the moment when i was like what's up with sam rockwell (laughs) (laughs) what's he doing (laughs) i know he's supposed to be a bad guy but like a bad guy really dance like that i don't know (laughs) He does a he does a similar dance in uh, one of the Iron Man movies too when he's the when the one where he's the villain of an Iron Man movie. Yeah, he's so yeah he's great at dancing. Have you guys ever seen his Tucci Gang video? I don't know what that is. So it's a it's an SNL parody of Gucci Gang, which if you haven't heard the song Gucci Gang, it goes Gucci Gang Gucci Gang Gucci Gang Gucci Gang Gucci Gang Gucci Gang Gucci Gang. That's it. That's that's it. So Saturday Night Live took that and turned it into Tucci Gang. Uh, it's a Stanley Tucci uh, stand video. <laughs> and Sam Rockwell is dressed up as Stanley Tucci and like break dancing. It's incredible. So he is a good dancer. Oh, yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. We, Chris, we're going to watch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, I am Pete Davidson. I wrote uh, Tucci Gang with Michael Coleman. I pitched to Sam and he uh, he really oh, likes to Sam. dance. We figured he could look there like is. Stanley Tucci and he just uh, was really into the look idea. Look at his little bald and cap. we wanted to get the real Stanley Tucci. And we called him, but he was in London and he couldn't make it. Um, so he sent us a video and we actually ended up using it because uh, he's the man, the Tucci. Tucci. It was the directed dude. by Paul Briganti. We just wanted it to look exactly like the Chris, are we going movie. to watch all the didn't look minutes? exactly <laughs> I don't think so. We, uh, can't, we can't hear you, Chris. I guess it was just a behind the scenes. I don't know if it was an actual I video of the so. Stanley Tucci gang. Oh, well. We tried. It's just called Tucci gang. Tucci yeah, gang. Get it, get it right. Sta- I saw uh, Stanley I Tucci just- on the train once. Really? In New York City. I share a birthday with him, so that's awesome. Just call him Stanley Threechi, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> oh. Is it time to rate the cage? Well, let's let's do one one section before that, Chris. Can you can you take us to trivia? <gasps> trivia. Trivia. We have new uh, music cues that go like da, 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 and then trivia. I but love that. But we yeah. don't have I don't have them on there yet because I ran <laughs> out of time. All right, here's the section where I tell you guys a couple things that I learned about the film when I was researching it. When Alison Lohman auditioned for this, she dressed up like a 14 year old girl and fooled Ridley Scott when she was 23. That's how she got the part. And that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, There's a girl is- I, I'm on a team with, at the at my second city team, who is like 23, but like could, like seriously looks like a 14 year old. And it's like, uh, I think that's a thing is like, if you can play young, but you're older, like that, I guess that works for like high school dramas on ABC Family or Freeform or whatever. It makes sense because it's like you, you yeah. have the maturity of an adult and the availability to, I imagine. Yeah. You don't have to go to school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you remember the scene? Here's some more trivia where uh, we where they went into the airport and you were like, "Oh, I think this is the LA Convention Center." Mm-hmm. Um, we were excited because the LA Convention Center plays a big role in Face Off. Um, and then we were like, "No, it's LAX." But then we we're like, "Oh, but this looks weird." They this so that that wasn't filmed at LAX. It was filmed at the Anaheim Convention Center because Anaheim it, Convention Center. Anaheim Convention Center because it was two thousand so and. Four and it was not easy to film in an airport back then. Those were those were two thousand three security yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. Um. Another thing is that all of the con artists smoke at some point in the film. The, this was a clue added by the filmmakers to indicate that the people who smoke in the film are con men. Oh. So all con men are smokers. That's how you catch them. That's how you catch them um 
Steven Spielberg was almost going to direct this, but then decided to do Catch Me If You Can instead. Wow, what a big mistake. <laughs> it would really been messed up uh, there. Heartwarming, probably. It probably would have been a bigger movie if he had directed it. Probably, All yeah. All I remember of Car- Car- Catch Me If You Can is knock knock when tom hanks tells a knock knock joke anyway (laughs) is that movie worth watching i've never seen it it's pretty good oh yeah it's it's an excellent film i that's interesting i think there's a lot of parallels there it was a big time for con men movies i guess big time for those connas (laughs) if people love a con movie i feel like i feel like you know there's you know you you have a couple different plots though so like the the con man being conned one you can only do that so many times before people are like maybe this is a con man being conned movie you know yeah well i'm always suspicious of it now like who can you trust be chris let's let's rank this movie all right (laughs) and here's where it would go break the cage (laughs) As you can tell, I'm getting much better at my transitions. And look at this. I didn't have any trouble getting the Excel up. I usually do have a little trouble. So today. You're doing great. Uh, today's a good this day. So picture. <laughs> yeah, the that- way this works is that we are going to score each Nicolas Cage movie. Uh, huh. Oh, Chris, we, we spelled his name wrong in this graphic. <laughs> He doesn't have an H in his name. Uh, I don't know if it was a we or a you, but no, it was a me. It was, it was a, me. a Meg. I don't know. I well, it's not his real name anyway, so it's fine. But it is his real first name, right? Yes, it is his real curse first name. He was born Nicholas Kim Coppola. All right. So basically, the way this works is we we re- <laughs> <laughs> did Let's I get keep, it? Keep it. Yeah. Perfect. Done. No, no notes, flawless. Right. Um, we rank the movies and then we see where they all line up because this movie is pre-recorded. We don't want to spoil any of the ones that we do after it. So we're just going to rank it right yeah. now. And then we're going to revisit this on our next live show, which I believe will be at the end of December, right before Christmas. And, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know what our next live show is. You'll watch, you'll see it. Wow. And then and that's when we will reveal the ranking for Gone in 60 Seconds and this movie and our third pre-recorded movie, which is going to be Vampire's Kiss. Um, anyway. Which this picture is from. Yes, that's true. It is. We have not seen that movie. I'm excited to see that. That is our next week movie. Uh, I didn't find out about this film until after I had chosen Matchstick Men and then I heard what this movie is about and I I cannot wait for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to it a lot you should absolutely tune in and we will be discussing it um we feel free to uh send us your thoughts and we can have a little chloe's corner if you end up watching it um so yeah so here's what we do is we rank uh on a scale of one to ten a couple of different things and we'll, we'll explain what each of these are the okay. first one is the cast and so this is not how good acting they are it's just how much do you like the people in this movie other than Nicolas Cage like is it like a bunch of your favorite actors is it a bunch of randos you don't care about that's pretty much it how deep is the bench I love I'm yeah how much do you love Sam Rockwell how many (laughs) love him I I I love him so much also in that part where the beginning the beginning part uh Debbie Reynolds is getting conned Debbie Reynolds is great yeah. Oh, that was Debbie Reynolds. Yeah, I didn't recognize her. I recognize her because she's the mom and ha- or she's the grandma in Halloween Town. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should watch Halloween Town, Meg. Have we, no, remember we we Con, talked about please. this and then and then we looked and it was like a Disney movie and you were like, oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, I I said if it's not Z O M B I E, I'm not watching it. That's what I said. that was another disney halloween movie never mind um (laughs) so out of 10 chloe how you feel about the cast of this movie i love them i love them it's a 10 oh strong words all right i'm gonna say i do like sam rockwell but i think other than that you know you have a bunch of no names i mean except for debbie reynolds right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a 
you know, a six. I know it's, but this is why we have three opinions that average out. Yeah, don't yeah. let us talk you yeah. out of your, your opinions are absolutely valid. Uh, and I think it's important to have a balance. I'm, listen, nothing can shake my love for you. You're like, <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm not. <laughs> she just goes 10 down the line. <laughs> um acting 10 but only for sam (laughs) one of the things chris i want to do eventually is look at uh because i I was adding up the scores that were given to the movies by the guests so i was uh if that makes sense so i wanted to eventually look and see which which of our guests did we get that was the biggest super fan of the movie that's a good call that makes sense and right now uh brendan for wild at heart and dan chapman for face off are actually (laughs) tied in their intense enthusiasm for oh my god their most enthusiastic guests all right um i'm actually gonna in this go... segment we call throwing off the curve all right what do you say yeah i'm actually gonna go three i did not recognize a lot of people in this i i mean i thought everyone was fine but i didn't nothing no one really stood out to me so all right so acting this is in general not just nick cage but in general the acting quality How well of this acting film. is this if you want us to go first i'm gonna say seven i felt like the main characters i think i felt like they were you know well cast uh the fbi the the fake fbi agents were really bad i didn't like them at all they did a bad job (laughs) so i'm gonna say seven okay i'm gonna agree with you I think it's it's like not the best acting in the world, but there wasn't like bad acting that really threw me off. Maybe like you said, like the small smaller, but like nobody was really like terrible. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say seven too. The, this is challenging because some of the acting that might seem bad was people <laughs> conning people. So like the daughter's acting, yeah, was supposed to be weird. So yeah. I'm just gonna go right down the middle with this and give it a five. All right. I, I don't know how to interpret it. Um, all right, this movie, if, this is fun. How fun is this movie? Are like, how much are you just like, yeah, I loved watching this movie. <laughs> I would say like an eight. Okay. Whoa. Oh man. <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, not surprised. We we know she loves this movie. I now love, I love, I love it. <laughs> now, what is the fun? What what makes it fun for you? Is it just Sam Rockwell? um i think oh boy yeah a lot of it is just me being like what is in sam rockwell's head what's he thinking about right now (laughs) what's a dream boat dream boat uh yeah that and just like i i felt like like what nick cage's trajectory was like interesting to me uh and seeing him like become goofy was enjoyable oops yeah i i just want to pitch you on an idea chloe i think yes could start a similar podcast and call it the rockwell files (gasps) i'm gonna do it i'm writing it down she's like so many podcasts (laughs) Go through every one of Sam Rockwell's movies. (laughs) All right, Meg, what'd you think? Was it fun? Oh, this is me. Never mind. Uh, What I think is fun. I think I love it when like you have like a heist and there's like that, 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 that thing's happening. And I thought like the fun of the con was not captured in this film. Like the fun part where they're like doing all kinds of Ocean's Eleven style stuff. The biggest thing was that switcheroo we saw. So, Mm. you know, this was pre Ocean's Eleven or whatever. It's a small swap. (laughs) I'm going to give it a six just because yeah, it wasn't a lot of fun. Fair. It was more of a, yeah. I'm, I'm going to give it an eight. I love a con movie. I didn't think it was a bad con movie. I just I, like, I, like I, I enjoyed watching it. I would recommend it to other people if they were like, like, so, so one of, uh, one of our friends, Liz just asked us today, which of, you know, I'd love to watch one of the Nicolas Cage movies and watch an episode of your show. And I was trying to think of like, what's the best, option and like if this had been one of them i if this had been recorded at the time then i would have been like this is a good one because it's like 
it's like that or like leaving Las Vegas is like <laughs> the Wicker Man. Yeah. I wouldn't say that it's fun, you know. So I I think it's fun. All right, technical. This is uh, how well done technically is this movie. This like, is like more for like stunts and anything they're gonna get PowerPoint. Like if you're gonna give a technical Oscar to the film, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like any of those categories. But I would also include costumes. Oh well, then <laughs> I was pretty hyped on these costumes. Uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard because I I don't I want to judge it by two thousand three standards, right? But at the same time, the power the like weird cartoon noises and the PowerPoint transitions were not great. Um. Let's go with like uh let's go with like a six. All right. You know, because they did they did the outfits were great. <laughs> he didn't and Nicolas Cage didn't have bad hair in this movie. There's a lot of movies where he has really bad hair. This is his hair is oh fine. yeah. It was not That's distracting. True. Uh I'm gonna I'm right there with you. I mean, there wasn't anything terribly wrong with anything they did. It didn't seem, but there yeah. wasn't like anything super impressive. Like there wasn't a, actually I'm gonna go five. Like there wasn't a giant practical stunt. Or CGI, yeah. or like anything amazing they did that was that seemed you know, but it was it was invisible. They put a whole room on a roof. <laughs> did they though? Boys wait for a room on a roof. Or did he just did he just exit a door on a roof? Then they just cut from it, you know, soundstage. Uh, I'll give it a five. I feel like it's middle of the road. Nothing's wrong with it. Right. Um, all right. Overall, how much did you like this movie, Chloe? <laughs> I'm, it's an eight. It's an eight. Yeah. All right. That's that's a solid. I'm gonna do. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna give it a seven. It wasn't like, eh, I was okay with it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. Uh, I, I, I just the whole premise. The whole premise like is just like come on. But it's an enjoyable it's film. I'm gonna give it an eight. I oh, liked wow. it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, right. Chris. I mean, you guys are really putting this one up there. It's gonna end up beating some other films. I, I sure. think it Good. should. I think so. We have seen some bad movies. <laughs> <laughs> so uh this uh this last one is just a bonus you can award or take away a point for anything you like, such as room on a roof plus one. <laughs> Three points for room on a roof. <laughs> I think we're. I think we're. I think the limit is just a single point. Wow. Uh, plus or yeah. negative one. Yes. One point for room on a roof. <laughs> <laughs> I, all right. I'll, I'm gonna. Oh, Sam sorry. Rockwell dancing. I was gonna say I'll do this for Chloe and give a point for Sam Rockwell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she can't. She can't give another point. So I'll do that. Thank you. Oh God, I feel I feel terrible doing anything. Uh, this is this one's for Chloe too. A bonus point for the fashion. Uh. So all <laughs> points for Chloe. Yeah. All right, and so you'll just have to tune into our next live episode, which uh, is gonna be the one after the next one to find out where this ranks. I think this is gonna do fairly well. Although, will it beat so Face Off, our current reigning champion? I don't know. That's a pretty. It's that's a pretty classic cage movie. Yeah. All right, now let's go over to Chris. We're going to the cage gauge. The cage gauge. The cage is- gauge. The cage gauge. The cage gauge. We we plot on a quadrant map. Cage's okay. acting versus Cage's yeah. craziness. So like when I say cage craziness, I mean that quintessential Cage okay. yelling random lines like that, like ah, like you know that brand like of, piss, of pissed blood. Exactly. Yeah. Pissed so blood. Out of ten, what would you what would you put Cage's craziness in this film at? And we don't mean craziness as a judgment about mental illness yeah, in this no. case. It's yeah, just, let's clarify. This is that, yeah. that Cage trademarked Cage yeah. craziness. Jitteriness. Yeah. Unpredictability. You know, it's pretty it's pretty subdued cage. Uh and when I say like a because he only has those like two or three points when he's yelling, right? Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. would say like a like a five. Five. It's a pretty uh, subdued cage. 
I am in complete agreement with you, but it does have that one moment, which is like a top 10 moment. So I'm going to give it an extra point for that and call it a six. Yeah. Even though this is a super, you know what? Actually, I'm going to go with a five too, because it is a super subdued movie, a super subdued cage. I don't want to give this too much. You're right. Five. This is so interesting because I, I was thinking the exact opposite. I feel like every, you know, for much of the movie, he's like doing all these, like this, like very intense physicality. He's doing the eye twitch. He's saying a lot of things. He's doing intense rants. Like I'm, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a seven and a half. Oh, you right. know, now that you're saying that, I'm like, oh crap! I don't want to. I don't want to sway you. But yeah. it's not like face off kind of crazy. It's it's like he has a, he's acting. I I count that as acting. I don't count that as yeah. cage crazy. Yeah, uh, okay. that was my thought. Yeah. yeah, I hear you guys. I stick. I'm sticking with it. Hey, stick to your guns. Respect. Especially right. like in comparison to like what 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 have we seen recently where he's very subdued? Like National Treasure, you know? Yeah, National Treasure has zero caginess in it at all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So this is like acting. This is just Cage's acting. His acting ability. This, I mean, I think he did a great job. I'm going to give him an eight. eight. I think whatever whatever Ridley Scott was doing with him, I think it was uh, working. It was, it was working. I agree. I think Cage's performance, his performance alone was, you know, it was pretty good, so I'll I'll, yeah. I'll I'll give him a seven. Yeah, I will do another seven and a half. I agree with everything yeah. you said. So you just averaged for us. <laughs> you just hit the average. Yes, I did. Nice. <laughs> well, let's so, see. Though that seats us on the cage gauge. Uh, that puts us as many of his films in the top right quadrant, which corresponds to good acting and and lots of cage craziness. So. Yeah. Well, We've also picked a lot of the better film. Like, we, it'll be interesting when we get to like the like the last five years of his career. Yeah. You know, which will firmly be in the bad acting, more crazy catalog, I believe. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I can't wait till we get to movies like Season of the Witch, the Ghost Rider films, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh my when gosh! When we really get in there, it's gonna get real crazy. USS Eva Mendes. It's gonna be yeah. What a cast! USS Indianapolis, oh. Men of Men of Courage. Eva Mendez in Cage is playing, I shit you not, in the movie they refer to him as a 26-year-old man. Well, when was Rider. it filmed? When he was 26? No, no, no. This was no. a recent. Oh. No. Uh -oh. oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and he, he's dating Eva Mendez. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. It's that was like uh... It's Ghost Rider 1. Do you guys think... Do you remember the movie The Other Guys and how Will Ferrell was married to Eva Mendez? Yes. Mm. Do you think that was like a direct jab at Ghost Rider? Probably. <laughs> Probably so the whole movie was just the send up of Ghost Rider. If I knew more about <laughs> Ghost Rider, I could riff on this more, but I have never seen it. I don't know. There's but a ghost and he rides. There's so many yeah. movies with comedians though where they set themselves up to be in these relationships with like gorgeous women like like Seth Adam Rogen. Sandler or Seth Rogen. Yeah, every time they have a movie, it's always like an excuse for them to have like a, a gorgeous wife in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. We are almost done. We gotta drop by quickly and learn a quick Nicolas Cage fact. Oh okay. cage facts. Ooh. Nick Cage facts. Um we we liked a little spend a teeny quick little amount of time learning about Nicolas Cage behind the scenes because he's yeah. such a character. Um, yeah. Although this today's fact is not actually something that he did, um, it is. Uh, if you had to, if you guys had to guess what the name of the Nicolas Cage subreddit is, I think Chris might already know this. The what? most popular Nicolas Cage subreddit. I remember vaguely you'd be like oh it's probably r slash nick cage like on reddit like the forum yeah. devoted to nicholas cage yeah, yeah yeah it's actually one true god <laughs> it's r slash one true god and it is incredibly active and popular and i've been trying to promote our show on there but no one seems to see it no <laughs> takers because they're like you are a front. You're, this is blasphemy to the one true God. <laughs> I, think, I do think that the overall theme seems to be like appreciating him from kind of the same perspective as us. You know, it's not like, it's not like, uh, oh, this is a, 
What is that a reference to? They just like him a lot. Oh, they just were okay. All right. <laughs> Chloe Takes all kinds, I guess. <laughs> um, all right. So that's it. This is this is our show. Here's the part where Chloe, you promote something that you've got going on, which I know you've got a couple of things going on. What do you want the people to to watch or listen to or oh so I want people to go and listen to True Tales of the Illuminati. Uh, it's a scripted audio drama. You can find it wherever you find your podcasts. And it is uh, basically a workplace sitcom. Uh, it's the Illuminati trying to subtly influence history and doing a bad job because it's comedy, folks. Uh just and to, then second of all to add to what you on... just said chloe uh that podcast is like up for awards yeah i got nominated for my performance that's really cool so people should is listen it, to yeah. that shit that's awesome is it, so is it over or is it is, is it is there more episodes coming out where is it at the season yeah so the first season got released it was three episodes uh we're working on a couple mini episodes right now and season two is entirely written season three is in the works at the moment uh but we're waiting waiting to record those until we can get back into the studio because it was recorded in a nice fancy recording studio it's very good quality that's awesome yeah yes uh so please please go listen to it because it's one of those things of like you know, as an improviser, I try not to like foist all of my comedy stuff onto my non-improv friends. Um, but this is something that like I've actually gotten people to listen to and they'll they come back and they're like, I actually really liked that. <laughs> that wasn't terrible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. With a surprise in their voice, it's just like I know. Oh. Yeah, that upsets me a little, but I'll take it. <laughs> uh so i've got that and um and then also i do a morning show on mondays called hello world uh it's on a 9 30 eastern time on 2mb studios twitch 2mb as in too much bread and it's just a very chill way to wake up on monday morning um we have the live stream but we've also got on youtube so if you're on the west coast and that's a little bit early you can start it a little bit later and it's just something nice to have on in the background we interview really interesting people um and it's just a nice way to start the week that's so cool i love that you guys are doing that i have listened to it i agree it's a nice morning show oh thank you Uh, (laughs) that's awesome yeah definitely go check out the stuff chloe is doing she's super funny and I, I, it's awesome that you have all this, this content to promote. This is great. Yeah. Uh, oh, and also just follow yes. me on Twitter, Clodge23, C H L O J 23. That's it. Clodge. <laughs> yeah. Cause Clojo was taken. <laughs> so Clodge. This <laughs> is writing it out. Nice. I, I probably got to change that handle at some point, but. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine it's i think it's yeah. i think it is a perfectly ac- adequate one i yeah. recently changed my twitter handle because it had my last name in it and i felt worried about that mm-hmm. and it was hard to think of something else i was like i want it to be clear kind of what my name is but i also don't want it to just be like my name plus a bunch of numbers so yeah it's hard to you, i think you should stick with it yeah all right so uh we uh i think the main thing we have to promote from our end is virtual improv every friday at 7 p.m pacific um chloe is an occasional guest on that show and uh and it's fun and yeah. uh, you can see it on the same twitch as you are maybe watching this so twitch.tv slash managers comedy um we are back next week with another pre-recorded episode uh which by the time you are listening to this we would have already recorded but hasn't been played yet so that's confusing but anyway it's going to be vampires kiss with uh our stand-up comedian dave thomas so that'll be really fun um yay yeah 
and we are uh, uh, trying to, you know, do a little fundraising thing for the uh, Downtown Women's Center. So if you are listening to this and you are so motivated, um, they're an organization in Los Angeles that's focused on exclusively serving and empowering women experiencing homelessness and formerly homeless women. Um, it's a great organization. If you want to throw them some money, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't be bad karma. It'd be a nice thing to do. Give them your cash. Give them cash. So... That's it. That's our episode. Any closing thoughts on the movie? It was fun. I liked it. That's yeah. Fun. Well, I just I got a confession to make. Mm. This this whole thing was a con. What? <laughs> I'm actually your mom. <laughs> Chloe's been 14 this whole time. This is an extremely long con. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Reverse con. Hey, you know the what, real- Chloe? We've been conning you. We knew it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this isn't really a show. We just wanted to have a nice little Zoom chat that's going nowhere. You're on a rooftop. You, guys, you could just. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a rooftop, Chloe. <laughs> How did I get on this rooftop? I thought you guys were in California. You know, all your friends are in on it too. They bonked you on the head. Buddy Joe, are you in on this? Buddy Joe. I think, like, yeah, conja. The, the real con is, is on the listeners. Friendship? It's on the listeners because they listen to this whole thing expecting it to be something. And this is what the they got. The real con is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> the real right, con is friends. That's my that, time. I'm going to go. All right. That's just been great. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you all next week.